thank you for joining us for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL.tv where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is vegan meals. I'm Elizabeth, and as usual, I'm joined by Katie and Beth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, why don't you start us off and tell us what you made? Okay, so today for vegan meals, I swore I was not going to choose a salad because salad is my probably my favorite food in the world, but there's so much more to vegan cooking than salad. That said, the recipe that I chose today is called Forbidden Rice Salad. Um, it's from this book called East, 120 Vegan and Vegetarian Recipes from Bangalore to Beijing. It's a really interesting book. And this is Forbidden Rice Salad with Blistered Broccolini and Miso Dressing. And I, I let myself choose this because it really is not your traditional salad. It's actually more of a rice dish. So it's like a rice bowl or something like that. Um, so let me tell you about it. So for the salad, you use Venery Nero rice. And I think I'm saying that right, but it's a black rice or forbidden rice. And then you blister broccolini and snow peas in canola oil. And you put the rice in a bowl and you put um, avocado and shredded red cabbage, thinly sliced radishes and edamame beans with your broccolini and your snow peas. And then the dressing is made of cashews, ginger, white miso, canola oil, lemon juice, agave syrup, salt, and water that you all just put. The recipe says a blender. I used a food processor and you just blitz all of that together. Um, so it comes together really, really beautifully. It's a very nice looking dish with the black rice and the uh, green vegetables and then the cabbage with the purple and the radishes with a little hint of color. So it's very pretty. Um, the first time I made this, I made it for myself for lunch and my husband saw me eating it and he asked about it. And so I told him about it and he said it sounded really good, which is a little surprising because you know he's very much a meat eater. Uh, but I did end up making it for both of us and he really liked it. So that was a awesome uh, result. The one thing that I did change the second time I made it was the first time the dressing was a little bit too sweet for me. So I just completely left out the agave syrup and that was perfect. So I don't know if that's just me. I don't have, I don't like a lot of sweet in my savory dressing. So that worked for me. I also found that um, the cashews didn't get very smooth in the dressing. So the second time I tried to make them a little bit smoother by soaking them for a couple of hours, and it didn't really make a difference. I think maybe if I had done it for overnight, soaked them, it might have made a difference. But honestly, like, I don't even know that I would make the effort because once you put the dressing on the salad, you can't taste that sort of texture of the cashews anymore. It just totally blended in. Um, but overall, really like the thing that makes this salad is the sort of different textures that you're dealing with and the different temperatures. So you've got like the cool and creamy avocado that's mixing with your crisp vegetables and rice. And it just like all just, I don't know, it was like a, just like a flavor sort of burst in your mouth. I really, really enjoyed it. And so this is definitely something that I will make again. I've been thinking recently about making it and substituting uh, asparagus for broccolini because I think that that would taste really good in this recipe too. So that's it, forbidden rice salad. Katie, um, how was it difficult to find the forbidden rice and how did you, is it, was the preparation different than typical like white or brown rice or can you say a little bit about that? Yeah, so I it was semi difficult to find um, the first first place I went looking for it was online actually and that didn't really pan out well for me I was able to find like some instant black rices which just it, it, it's not the same so um, I did end up finding it Whole Foods so that it was just in the regular rice section and so you know it's a pretty common place that is around. I also think like if you're in the Ann Arbor area, like Ann Arbor Farms 
or some of our other like healthier stores, you know, you might find them, find it there. I'm not sure if you could find it at like a Kroger or something. I haven't looked there. Um, but as far as preparing it, it was actually really similar to regular rice. I'm actually not like a huge rice eater. So it's not something that I prepare on a regular basis, but it didn't feel much different than preparing a uh, white or brown rice uh, cooks for like 18 minutes and then you let it sit and you fluff it with a fork, you know, like you normally would. I, I'm also glad that you brought that up because I do think that if you couldn't find black rice for this, it would be fine with brown or white rice. I think it would taste good either way. Well, that's good to know. That sounds good. I Yeah, I, I thought you didn't like rice. Maybe I'm wrong. And no, and I kind of thought you would maybe call me out on that because <laughs> I, I don't really like rice. It's, it's a taste or it's something that I'm learning to, I'm trying to learn to like, and this was a really good recipe for that. If you're not a big rice fan, like all of the other flavors and stuff sort of like absorb the rice. I thought it was good. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll cook with the black rice a little bit more and see how I like it in some other dishes. All right, so on to you, Beth. What did you choose for vegan meals? I chose a dish called uh, General Sow's Tofu. And it's something that Kurt has been making, my husband has been making a couple times um, this year. Uh, it, involves, it involves using a technique that we just discovered that you might have used before, but it's called velveting. Uh, so it's adding cornstarch to the, you can do it with meat, but we, you know, with this tofu and what it does is um, you toss it, it adds a crunchiness to it. Um, so that's typically why it's used. And we learned that that's the technique that's used in like most Chinese restaurants. So it was interesting because we learned a new, you know, term. Um, and so it, Kurt usually fries it and it's been really, really good. I mean, I'm not a huge tofu eater, but I really liked the way he made this. The sauce is delicious with equal parts of soy, apple cider vinegar, vegetable stock or water, and then and cane or brown sugar is what I use. And then again, cornstarch with that and red pepper flakes. Uh, so the sauce is amazing. I would use it for any number of uh, stir fries, but uh, so Kurt had fried it and I, I don't really like to fry food. I don't like the smell in my house, but I like eating it, but I baked it uh, to try it differently and um, baked the tofu. And uh, initially though, you do start by marinating it. The recipe says for five minutes or preferably overnight. So I did uh, marinate it overnight with apple cider vinegar and um, what was the other, uh, just some soy, soy sauce, just those two things, uh, marinate, dump it out. And that's when you uh, add the cornstarch, coat it, and then either, like I said, fry or put it in the oven. And it was still good, it was good. I, I liked it, I'm gonna have it for lunch too. Any questions about that? I, um, I velvet, chicken. I didn't know that's what I was doing. So that's cool. Velveting. I hadn't heard that before. Um, yeah, I do that with this orange chicken recipe that I make a lot that I hope to share with you guys someday. And I'm really excited to, tr to try the general so flavor. I've actually been looking for a recipe and haven't really found one. So I'm excited to try yours. Thanks. You know, interestingly, I I was mentioning to, to my husband as we were eating it, I was like, I wonder how this sauce would taste with by adding a little orange juice instead of the, um, the vinegar or the soy sauce. Um, I think it, it'd be worth a shot and it would, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways you can play with it, but I love the consistency of the sauce and the uh, crunchy, not quite as crunchy in the oven. Um, and maybe I didn't bake it as long as I should have, but, um, but it was still very good, so. Anyway, if, if there's no other comments or questions, I'm going to hand it over to Elizabeth. Sure. Thanks, Beth. That sounds really good. I'm excited to try that myself. Um, so this is funny. I have the same book as Katie. Um, I have 
East. Um, and I just wanted to say this has a, I mean, it's, it's vegan and vegetarian, that's the theme, but there's a ton of really excellent um, vegan recipes in here. So I actually kind of had trouble choosing which one I wanted to try out and make. Um, and I made a few, um, but my favorite one um, is actually a really simple one. Um, I have it bookmarked. Oh yeah, it's pistachio, pea, and mint soba noodles. And um, some of the recipes in this book do call for ingredients that might be a little more difficult to find um, or that I feel like I probably could find if I ordered them or went to a special store, but I didn't really want to drive all around town. So this one didn't have anything too unusual and it's it's really good. It's, it's um, in the book, they say it's a welcome to summer dish because um, it's really fresh and light, but it also is filling enough to have for um, a lunch or a, or a light dinner. And basically, um, you kind of just blend um, pistachios and chili and garlic in a food processor until it makes a paste. Um, and then you add in lime juice and um, peas and some mint if you like mint. I added a little less because I don't love mint. Um, and then a little bit of sesame oil. And you pulse that until it's not liquidy, but just again, kind of a, a thicker paste. And then you quickly boil some soba noodles, you quickly blanch um, some snow peas, and basically you just have the soba noodles with these really fresh snow peas, and then you have this green, fresh paste of the pistachios and garlic and mint and peas um, that you kind of add and just mix it all together. And it was really good, it was really easy. Um, I just thought it was really refreshing. I might add a few more like veggies next time just to kind of have it be a little more substantial and maybe just use up some more veggies, get some more servings of vegetables in. Um, like I feel like you could toss in broccoli, you could toss in some like lightly blanched asparagus and that would be really good. Um, but yeah, it was great. Um, I'm probably gonna make it again. It was, like I said, quite simple. And I thought it was really good for, for summertime, especially because it was just easy. And a lot of the ingredients just kind of make me think of summer with the peas and the snap and the snap peas, the regular peas and then the snap peas and all that. So yeah, that is, that's my kind of simple recipe from East. Um, definitely would recommend checking out this, this cookbook though, because there's a lot of good stuff in that. So. Okay. That's really funny that you both have the same cookbook of all the cookbooks that you could possibly pull off a shelf. Um, that sounds delicious. I look forward to making that too. Yeah, I mean, that is really funny. And I've actually seen this cookbook uh, at, at the library on the hold shelf quite a bit. So I feel like it is making the rounds. So I guess that's one that we would definitely suggest. Thanks for sharing that particular recipe. I did not land on that one. So I'll have to revisit. Thanks, Elizabeth. Yeah, I actually think um, I'm going to buy this one because there was so much in it that I liked and it's already a little overdue. Um, so I need to take it back, pass it on to the next person, and I'll probably try to buy a copy because there were at least four or five recipes that I would make regularly. So anyway, um, thanks everyone. If we don't have any other comments, I think we can wrap up. And thanks to all of you who watched Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below. Um, and look at or look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes that we talked about today and you can share your own in the comments if you would like. Um, join us next time on Recipe Share and we're looking forward to seeing what you've been making so thank you for sharing your recipes. We'll see you next time.